Okay, so we're going to do our um, foundation walls uh, today, as well as get some of our floors in here. Um, so first, we're gonna we're gonna get our foundation walls in there. Um, they need to. We're gonna make sure make it on kind of like a crawl space sort of thing. Um, so these need to be basically uh, where I'm at. Code requires at least 30 inches below grade. Um, so we'll need to take that into account. Um, we already have our level set up here so we know that our top of foundation is at this level and the top of our footer is um, down at negative four, four and an eighth. Um, so first what we're gonna do, we're gonna um, go to our level one, we'll go up to our wall and I'm gonna do a structural wall. Um, rather than the default architectural, I'm going to go to structural. And there's all these different walls that are already in here. Um, there's a 12 inch concrete. Um, it says retaining wall, but basically if you look at the structure of it, all it is is one foot of cast in place concrete, which is basically what we want. Um, if I click on anything else, you see how this is really black. I don't want it to be black. Uh, I don't want it to poche like that. Uh, so I'm going to change these, the surface pattern, um, I'm actually going to get rid of the surface pattern altogether, because um, I don't want it to read as anything in particular when I'm in elevation or anything. Um, the concrete cut pattern, I'll make that not so it's back black, I want it to kind of fade just a little bit. Um, I'm going to say OK, and OK, so we're good there. Um, so you'll notice in a structural wall like this, um, when it, you're doing foundation walls, you draw it on this, like we'll say you, you draw it on the first floor level, but it's going to extend below you. So you're not going to see it in this view, but you'll draw it on this view because this, is, uh, this gives you kind of a point of reference. Um, another easy way to do this would be if I go to my 3D view here. Um, I can use this uh, select lines, and I can just go in and click to um, to place this on there. You'll notice I can kind of gauge if I select this line; it's on the inside there. Um, depending on which side of the line I'm on, it jumps back and forth uh, to either side of the the wall. Um, you want to make sure that your location line is set on like the finish face. Uh, that way you're in line with the edge of the stone on the outside there. Um, so I'm going to do finish face exterior and I'll just go around and click these into place um, all the way along here. We'll probably end up with a... We'll need a another um, foundation wall that runs basically uh, right down the middle there. So on this bearing point for this roof up here. We're going to need that wall to extend through there, but we'll go ahead and um, get all these exterior ones first. So we've got that taken care of. And then if I click on this wall here. So that goes to the inside. I don't want it on that side. I want it inside. So if I take this wall and I just trim this to that point, now I have that running all the way through there. So I don't want this coming all the way through, so I'll drag this back to this point. Same with this. I'll drag this point back. So we're good there, we're good there. Um, we'll continue that one across. So it looks like that takes care of our foundation walls for the most part there. Now, I need to grab all of these. These, if I go to my south view here, these are set at level one. I don't want those set at level one because I actually need to get my um, my uh, kind of floor system and stuff like that in there. So if you'll notice, my base constraint is level one. My top constraint is level one and it's going down six feet. So I want to go ahead and change these to top of foundation. So they jump down there. 
Um, and actually, what I can do, I'm because I have my level set up, I'm going to set this to zero feet, and I'm going to change this, the base to top of footer. So it's going to say the base is at the top of the footer, the uh, top constraint is top of the foundation, so it's going to jump up to there. So we're going to have this gap in between here right now, which is fine. Uh, we're going to go in, we're going to put our floor system in, and then we'll deal with all the exterior walls and how to get those um, to kind of come down and sit on, on the foundation wall and get that all kind of resolved. Um, but first we're going to kind of go through and put our footers in. Um, so our footers these are 12 inch uh, exterior or our 12 inch foundation walls so if we go under structure we want so this is foundation and is it an isolated footing is it a footing underneath a wall or is it a slab we're doing footings underneath of walls so I'm gonna hit that and this says wall foundation bearing footing 36 inch by 12 inch. I don't need it to be 36 inches wide nor do I need 12 inches necessarily. So I'm going to come in here and duplicate this. I'm going to say bearing footing and it's going to be 24 inches wide by 10 inches deep. Um, that should be sufficient for what we're doing here so we'll do 10 inches there. Okay so we should be good there. Um, everything works pretty well so then if I select if I select one thing it's gonna put the footing underneath it if I select one and hit tab and it selects a bunch of them I can click and it'll place a, a bunch of them all at once so I can kinda go through and do this pretty quickly by using tab to place it all the way around so now I've got my my little crawl space sort of area underneath there um, looks pretty good now I just need to kind of work on my floors and this little gap that I've got um, running around here so what we're gonna do is we'll do our our second floor um, floor first and then we'll get into the, the first floor so if I go to level 2 and if you remember we did our ceilings um, on the first floor we made them a half an inch just the drywall and then I talked about how we're gonna leave a gap in between those so that the lights can sit up inside there and then our um, our floor on the second floor would basically just be the the subfloor so we'll do architecture we'll hit floor and right now it's set up to be a generic 12 inch floor there's a whole bunch of other ones in here but we're gonna create our own so we'll duplicate and we'll say second floor and come in here and say okay it's gonna be three quarters of an inch that's just gonna be basically our subfloor and then let's go ahead and put our finished floor on here too um, we'll say this is we'll say it's gonna be hardwood so we'll do three quarter inch hardwood um, on the second floor there and we can put a rug down and all that sort of stuff we'll do some reclaimed hardwood or something like that so hardwood flooring and we'll deal with all those a little later okay so we have our our flooring system kind of put in here so we'll say okay okay and now we want our floor to sit back in the wall um, and it's going to sit back to this point back in here um, reason for that is basically we're not balloon framing this we're going to platform frame it um, so we're going to need need to um, basically have our wall or our floor extend into the wall to a point where the studs actually sit um, on it. So if I take this and we need to move that into a certain point. So we need to offset this six inches. There we go. And that's going to be six inches in. So we can grab these 
and that's going to be where our our floor system sits on the second floor. So then our studs will sit on top of this. Our sheathing runs down the exterior over the top of it and everything. And we should be in good shape there. So we'll say, click the check mark. Now if we go to one of our, our sections through here, we can see that our floor sitting um, right there. Now remember, when we did our our levels here, we did not include finished floor in the thickness between these two. So we're going to want to bump this up three quarters of an inch so that our finished floor sits above there and then we should have nine and a quarter so two by ten floor joists running in between there. So that should be pretty good. Uh, that takes care of that. Um, we're going to, if we cut through this, we're going to do the exact same thing as what we did with our ceilings. Remember how we joined the, and it doesn't look like we did this one right here, so as a reminder, we came in and we hit the join geometry tool, we selected our ceiling, and then we selected our wall. And that went ahead and cut out part of this wall so that our drywall sits on top of the drywall on the first floor. We want to do the same thing here. We want to take this and it's going to cut out part of this. So that takes that through. Now you'll notice it did not take this finish all the way through there. The reason for that is because we have defined this as a finish layer and we've defined this as a structure layer. It knows that a finish layer comes after a structural layer. So this we is our structural layer here so it's going to continue through we told it by selecting this first and join it to this we have told it that this structure overrides this structure so it's going to extend this one through to whatever boundary we've uh, defined as the edge of the floor so we've got that going through and then it says this is a finish layer and this is a finish layer but as soon as I hit this structural layer I'm stopping this so it goes ahead and, and recognizes that and uh, makes that adjustment. So now our finished hardwood floor actually kind of tucks underneath our drywall, which is um, not necessarily exactly how it would be um, be finished out, but it's way more accurate than this kind of coming through there. Normally, you know, your drywall comes in, maybe your your hardwood floor stops somewhere back in here or something like that. Um, but for the purposes of representation, this is actually pretty good uh, in terms of showing that correctly. So, now we have this all taken care of. We've got that floor uh, system in. Now we need to do our first floor. So we'll go to level one. So level one, we're going to do something a little different. Because we, don't, we aren't going to have can lights or anything like that lighting our crawl space, we can do a full floor system for that first floor. So I'll duplicate this. And I'll say first floor. So we're going to have hardwood on the first floor. We're going to have our um, subfloor. But we're going to move that up a little bit. Actually, let's keep the core there. So we'll move this up. And this is going to be our substrate. So this will be our 11 and 7 eighths um, floor joists there and I think that pretty much takes care of our entire floor system so we'll say this is structural material that is not and we'll say we're good there okay so now we need to um, basically place this all the way around our entire first floor. So we'll click this in. And we'll do a We'll do a gas fireplace, so we'll extend our floor system into where that kind of chimney and stuff is. 
So that extends all the way out to our core um, platform framed and everything and we should be good there. So we'll click our check mark. Now if we go to our our section this should be right about where we want it except we didn't take into account our finished floor here remember. Now instead of moving this up I think I'm gonna change my mind here. I think I'm gonna move this back down to the three quarters. So we're okay there and I'm gonna add three quarters to this. So I'm gonna move this up to 11 and a quarter and I'm gonna add three quarters to this. We're gonna move all of this down. So that grade and top of foundation is gonna be moved down three quarters. So we take into account our sub or our um, our finished floor there. Now I'm going to go back into my structure and I'm going to actually throw the poche on this um, on this structural piece. That way it kind of reads a little bit better across there. Now you'll notice we left this short because our stone is going to come down and sit on the foundation. So is our airspace, so is our um, so is our sheathing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come around here and highlight all of these walls here. That need to extend down. So I've got all of these and I want my base to be top of foundation. Now when I select this to be top of foundation, remember the top is unconnected and it's only three feet tall. So the gap is going to move from here to here and I just need to add whatever this gap is to the, uh, to the overall height here. So I'm going to say level one, nope, I want it to be top of foundation. It all drops down. Now I have my, my gap, but I know that that gap is the difference between this and this, so that is one foot two and seven eighths, so I'm going to make this four foot two and seven eighths. And that jumps back up to where I want it. Um, oh, I've got, no, I'm good there. Okay, so I'm okay. Now, everything should read basically how, how it should. So I do need to do the same thing to these. So I've got these ones here. Just change this down to top of foundation. No need to worry about the unconnected height on those because we don't have an issue there. Um, so we're good there. Everything all the way around sits on top except for these. Let's grab these real quick and throw those on top of foundation. So we're okay there. All the way around, that works pretty well. Um, now if we go to our section, now you can see our um, our stone comes down. Here's our, our floor. We're going to want to go ahead and join the floor to this. Join the floor to there. Um, and if I want this substrate to continue through, Let's say I go into my poche. Let's say if I check this structural on. Nope, that didn't work. So let's go in. And let's make that structure. There it goes. Okay, so now that it that reads appropriately. We've got this all um, worked out. Yeah, we've got a little bit of drywall showing down here, but that's not a big deal. Um, this is basically where our um, bottom plate is going to be. So we're going to end up with our uh, our plate that's um, got our anchor bolts and stuff going down into our foundation. And then our floor system and everything takes off from there. Um, so that reads pretty well um, going up through here. Obviously, when depending on what 
I'm not going to go through every section that I've got and join this to this and this to this and everything. Whatever sections I end up going through um, and detailing out, I would go in and join that geometry and make sure all of that's kind of cleaned up and make sure all of these are sitting uh, kind of where they should be. Um, but um, like little things like this, like this would get extended up another uh, half an inch. Um, this would get extended down another three quarters to show that it's sitting on top of that. This would sit on top of that. So let's say we the base is offset three quarters of an inch and the top is offset a half an inch. Now it would show something kind of like that, but if I join this to that, now that starts to read a little more like it should. And this up here, we're good there. So all that reads pretty well. There's one, so this one's extending down, the other one's not, so there's something set oddly here. Um, so that one was working pretty well. The other one is not. So if we change these both to finish five. Okay, okay. There we go. That's what we want. So that works pretty well. So is that up there? So everything um, looks like it's reading the way that it should. Um, so we've got our foundation walls in there, we've got our floors in there. Uh, looks like the exterior is kind of coming along a little bit. Um, we'll get into the, the sort of um, little deck or patio kind of thing out here um, as we start to detail the outside a little bit more. Um, we'll get into that. But uh, I think the next thing that we're going to kind of go ahead and do will be our... Um, fascia and soffits that run around the outside here. That way we can get some thickness showing to our uh, to our roof and get all of that um, worked out to exactly where we want it. So that will be the next step.